Uh, I'll dive. Well, now I can. Yeah, maybe I can speak a little bit about myself. Sorry, it's just that I was setting things up and I kind of forgot something. Uh, well, uh, my name is Marco uh, Berrocal. I work uh, at Partner Relations here at Green Geeks. I've uh, been working, I think, a little bit over a year. Uh, I'm also a developer, uh, theme and plugin developer uh, for clients. I, that's something that I do. Uh, I'm very passionate about it. And lately, ever since I uh, joined the Green Geeks group, I'm really passionate about, uh, you know, uh, teaching, learning, and giving what I know to people in order to help them uh, grow uh, business-wise, uh, knowledge-wise. I think it's really important that we push the uh, the platform forward, the ideas forward, uh, you know, as a, as a sponsor that we were, that's what we did in, in, in conferences all over the continent. And uh, well, now we kind of are pivoting and doing this, which I find it really exciting as well. And uh, well, I sincerely hope you like uh, today's uh, webinar. Uh, previously, we spoke about uh, the basic stuff about WordPress, how to install it, uh, how to set it up, you know, a little bit about the dashboard here and there. And today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into uh, what the content is. Uh, let me get set up because I kind of forgot uh, my username and password for my, uh, my uh, WordPress account. So if you guys will excuse me, let me uh, get that back. Okay, I think I have it somewhere. Okay, it's just that I sometimes manage so many installs, I, I forget. Okay, uh, password reset. I am at, okay, here you go. And I am going to go against the rules and use a, okay, we're gonna copy this and I'm gonna put this in my clipboard. Okay, so I am ready. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Uh, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> uh, I have to reset my password and I'm done. Okay, cool. So uh, let me share my screen and uh, we'll start. Okay, cool. All right, excellent. Uh, let's share screen and here we go. So uh, without further ado, let me close my email now because I need my password and let me open uh, my presentation. So here we are. Uh, today we're gonna talk about content. Uh, specifically uh, uh, has to do everything with content and how you tie this uh, with WordPress and how do you do stuff with WordPress uh, when you're planning uh, when you're planning to either redo your site or you know uh, give it a few tweaks here and there and uh, you know uh, what we're going to learn we're going <laughs> to learn an in-depth view of content okay uh, so why is why are we going to do that well uh, I don't like to repeat others. Uh, well, actually, I do. Uh, Google says uh, content is king, and they're absolutely right. Uh, in the end, our visitors come to our site to read content and to make decisions based on what they read and what they scan and what they uh, perceive. Uh, be this us, uh, in the example of being a host company, myself being a the web developer, uh, business owners of all kinds uh, types of industries. In the end, your customers or your visitors are going to come to your website and they're going to read your content and they are going to make decisions based on what content uh, you serve. Uh, so it's really important to get it right, especially when you're starting to uh, work with projects, uh, either your own personal project or, a, a, you know, uh, if you're a developer or a designer, you're laying this out uh, for your customer. I had to do this uh, myself over the years because uh, naturally I work with clients and, and clients, sometimes they don't have an idea as to what content they want to serve. So it's really important to get this right because everything unfolds from there. The design, uh, the decisions I make uh, on the design, uh, how I develop, which uh, themes that I use, what plugins do I do, how, what is my approach in order to, you know, get the content right. Okay, so what are we going to need? Uh, we're going to need uh, WordPress, of course. <laughs> we're going to need WordPress. I mean, that goes without saying. So uh, make sure you have a WordPress site installed. Uh, you can do this locally if you want, or you can do this on any, you know, environment that you wish to do so. Okay, uh, any themes and plugins are okay. Uh, by this, I mean, uh, Whatever you have uh, installed right now, whatever theme you have, whatever uh, plugins that you use are, are fine. We don't need to have a clean slate or anything like that. If you want to work with something existing, it's fine. If you want to work with something uh, fresh, uh, that's 
that's absolutely uh, okay. Uh, no coding will be required. I, I hope I don't disappoint some or relieve some with this, but uh, we're not gonna code. We're not gonna code anything, so. Um, so what are we gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna explain everything there is about content as far as WordPress is concerned. And then we are going to use a fictional scenario where we are going to define the content that I, as a, let's say I'm a web designer, web developer, and I wanna offer my services uh, to the whole uh, world. And I just have no idea as to how do I want to approach this. So I'm gonna give you like a quick approach on how I would do this and, and how am I going to use WordPress uh, as a content management system to accommodate what I define as far as content is concerned, okay? So uh, what comes out of the box? So what does WordPress have to, uh, out of the box? Okay, core features that WordPress has, it's, it's simple. Uh, I mean, it's really easy to use, it's easy to install, it's easy to manipulate, it's easy to customize. So that's one of the key features that WordPress has and that's what makes it so great and, and so powerful. Okay, uh, it's flexible in the way that, uh, okay, I'm very well aware that I could uh, have served in completely different industry than you, and that's fine. Uh, we as a hosting provider, uh, we could use WordPress also as a content management system for different parts, uh, different sections of our site. That's also completely doable. So it's flexible in the way that any industry will work and you can do pretty much anything you want with it. You can even sell your products. Uh, you can have art galleries. You can have anything you can think of. So that's that's that comes out of the box. Okay, it's manageable. Uh, you can scale it. You can uh, you know work with users, and you can make the site grow more and more and more. And, and you can completely manage it. And the last part, uh, which I don't know if so, uh, you guys are aware of, but uh, I'll explain it flatly. It's community driven. Uh, by this, I mean that there's an ongoing community that uh, volunteers and does this stuff mostly uh, for free in order to make the, uh, the experience grow, the WordPress experience, to offer more plugins, to offer more themes, to offer more solutions uh, to developers, to have webinars about WordPress that are for completely free. So that is kind of the ethos of, of what WordPress stands for. And it's really important uh, that that con continues because that's, that's what makes the platform uh, grow, okay? So that's enough about uh, WordPress. Well, I'm just kidding. So we're, we're going to need a strategy. We're going to we're going to need a strategy for for our uh, uh, fake scenario. Uh, you know, every business needs a strategy. This is uh, valid both in physical businesses than in uh, their virtual presence. You're going to need a strategy. So uh, usually, I ask my clients, okay, why do you want a website? Well, I mean, what do you want to do with it? So it's a simple question, but it really, it, it's sometimes it's difficult to answer because clients uh, think, they, 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 they feel that they need a website, sometimes because other people have it, because their competitors have it, or because they feel that they're missing out on something. But uh, when you ask them, uh, what do you need it for? What do you want, what do you want your site to accomplish? Uh, that, that's when things get a little hazy. And, but that's, it's really important that you ask yourself these questions. I mean, what do I need my website for? What, what do I want it to do? Uh, if I have a visitor coming to my site, what do I want him or her to do? with it uh, and you can and the important thing here is that you can actually tie uh, objectives that are related to your physical business to your actual business within your website so if we go for example with green geeks with our uh, a company so we want our visitors to sign up for, for a hosting account that's our primary objective as a web hosting company but we also have secondary objectives which are like for example people signing up for webinars uh, people signing up for our newsletter uh, people reading our blog posts, people reading our tutorials, things of that. So always uh, have a, a strategy that, that, that you can define in a few sentences what you want your site to accomplish. So it's, it's, really, it's really important that you do this because you're gonna come up, well, you're gonna come up with functionality. So functionality have to do with actions. So uh, I just kind of briefly mentioned the actions that uh, Queen Geeks, for example, would want to do with its visitors. So, you know, signing up for a website, uh, signing up for a hosting plan, transfer their domains, so forth and so forth. So you, you should ideally should start writing this stuff down, like in a notepad, you should describe, you should more or less describe what your business does also, and how can that, uh, uh, 
how can that go into your website? So how can that uh, business uh, model or your services or the products that you do uh, go into the website? So it's pretty straightforward when you sell stuff, like let's say you sell uh, labels uh, and say, okay, I wanna sell labels on my site as well. But it's not so simple if, for example, you were a lawyer and you were like, okay, am I a, a civil lawyer? Am I a, a privacy policy lawyer or am I, I'm a restaurant, uh, do I, which, do I, which places do I serve and so forth and so forth. So always write that down. The second item I would like to say is uh, categorize. So we need to label our content because sometimes the functionality might uh, fall on the different categories. So uh, if for example, uh, we as a hosting provider, we could say, okay, uh, yeah, we wanna sign up, uh, we want you to sign up for our hosting but we have uh, shared hosting, we have uh, virtual private servers, uh, we have dedicated servers, uh, you know, we have all of that. And, uh, you know, so even though we offer hosting, uh, we can categorize that stuff. So it's important that you, you know what things of your business can you categorize. So me, as for example, I'm a web developer, I could categorize that I work in uh, PHP, I can work in JavaScript, I can work in this language and this technology and so forth and so forth. So make sure you, you categorize that as well. So it's important that you do because as you, I'm sorry, I'm shifting back and forth. It's just that I'm looking at, at, at people here. So <laughs> it's good to see faces, it's, it's just a habit. So it's important that you categorize that because humans have the need to categorize, to label stuff, to create order out of chaos. So categorizing helps, uh, helps us accomplish that. So the third uh, aspect of the strategy is the SEO factor. So I'm not gonna go into details about what SEO, how do you do that, but uh, sometimes uh, you may wanna do a keywords uh, research on your industry. And you may, for example, uh, realize that some people are searching for certain terms and you particularly offer that and you wanna, you wanna take into account or into consideration the SEO factor with it. So you may wanna have a, a content strategy that involves SEO. So if, for example, uh, us, we could say WordPress hosting is really important to us. So we're gonna put that into our content and we're gonna make that part of our content strategy. So all of that leads us to the fourth point, which is the information architecture. So that's really a fancy word uh, for saying how your site is going to be logically uh, divided. How am I going to divide that? So all of this process of writing down ideas, of writing down objectives, of writing down uh, stuff that you want your site to accomplish, how you want to label that, and what SEO considerations are, are going to come into play will lead you into something called an information architecture, which is the next slide I'm about to show. Uh, this is a, a real example. This is, a, this is an example of a, a museum. So at the very top, they have their homepage and they, uh, through their process, they came up with all of these uh, sections within the website. So they're gonna talk about the museum, uh, how information about visiting the museum, you know, what, how to get there, what their opening hours is, uh, what, things is what things can you see and do at the museum, uh, music events, uh, sometimes they have music events, uh, they have a shop where they want to sell souvenirs. So they're going to have both a physical store and a, an online store that could be part of the strategy that they as a business uh, want to do. Uh, they want to have learning resources for, for people uh, before they come to the museum. And they also are very interested in, you know, volunteering and fundraising campaigns in order to sustain the museum. And at the very right, they have a make a donation, which is a, I'm assuming it's a process uh, on how to, you know, make your, how can you deposit and contribute to the museum. So all those examples that I previously gave you will lead into an information architecture, which is just a fancy word for a site map, I would say, but uh, it's more of a diagram. It should look like this. So I usually, when I do this, I come up with a diagram and I show this to the to the client. It really also it also helps if you do that on your own, even if it's your own business, because uh, especially if you do it in paper. Well, you can do it also in in a digital. Uh, uh, what you might call the program, it's, it's also good, but the paper is good because you can, you know, erase, you can change, you can do, you can redo. But the thing is, uh, this process, it's, 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 a, it's a creative process. It's a, it's, a, it's a process you hone over the years and it's gonna define how the content is going to be made. And this is all done before you start either picking a theme or a plugin or, uh, 
anything like that because you already have envisioned what your content is going to be and you can help and you can assess your clients in coming up with things like that and you can more or less start thinking okay how am i going to use wordpress to do these things so you start doing your research uh apart because uh for example uh make a donation may have or may uh, see the possibility of you using a plugin that allows you to do no donations with it. So here, here, that, that's why it's important to define this because if you do it on the fly, uh, sometimes, well, not sometimes, most of the time you're going to get stressed. And this also allows you to have some uh, cushion as far as time is concerned for the client to go back and think about it and get back to you as to how to approach that. And you can take advantage of that time to do uh, the research that you need in order to fulfill this uh, diagram. And sometimes the client might even say, okay, I don't, you know what? I don't want people to make donations. I'll, I'll take care of that and I'll do this myself. So it's really important that you do this uh, for clients, of course, and for yourself as well, because you may change your mind uh, before you start uh, implementing this into WordPress. So that's more or less the rundown of, of how content is defined. I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, books and, and, and tutorials out there about information architecture, which is the keyword that I would like you to, to uh, memorize, information architecture. There's a plethora of books. It's usually done uh, by, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, uh, <laughs> UX designers, I'm sorry. It's part of the, the, the uh, content strategies. It's done by them. So it's really important that you have a grasp of that in order to, you know, have killer content because people do read content. People like killer content. They love killer content. Uh, we are constantly reading stuff every day when we're on a computer. We read articles, we read Facebook posts, we do Twitter statuses. Uh, Instagram, I'm not going to get into it because I'm too old for that. And, uh, you know, we read all that stuff and we digest content. And so content should serve a purpose and should, uh, you know, be helpful in order to, you know, accomplish our business goals. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, WordPress. Okay. So I'm, first of all, I'm going to talk about, uh, now I'm going to, now we're going to shift about WordPress. So I'm going to talk about Gutenberg, the new editor. Uh, it's classic uh, versus Gutenberg. Okay, I'm going to discuss that because some people uh, might have uh, one or the other. So we're going to go. Uh, let me zoom this a little bit over here. So we're going to go into either pages or posts. So whenever we uh, uh, add a new one, uh, we're going to see this uh, huge editor over here. It's called the uh, block. It's called the block editor now, but it used to be called Gutenberg because. Uh, well, to get to be honest with you, <laughs> it was uh, a way content was supposed to be uh, revolutionized, according to uh, Matt Mullenbeck, who was who is uh, one of the founders of, uh, of WordPress. So uh, Gutenberg was the guy who invented uh, the print. So he he envisioned the code name for this project was given Gutenberg. So in a way, it did. So so I'm going to tell you guys why uh, this was uh, conceived. Uh, this was conceived because uh, WordPress as a content management system uh, competes against platforms such as Wix or such as Medium and other platforms that, uh, you know, are offering more features, are offering more stuff out of the box. Uh, some clients, uh, they want to have a better experience when they're writing. And I think the future of WordPress, uh, this is going to be a full-blown editor. Uh, by the time uh, Gutenberg really establishes itself. Well, what do I mean by that? So by that, I mean that you can pretty much design anything you want with it. So it's going to be an, a builder. It's, the keyword here is builder. So this, I think WordPress in the future is going to go the route of being both a builder and being a content management system for people who do not want to use that route. So Gutenberg offers that, but there, as, as usual, and as happens in the internet world, a lot of people were upset about the Gutenberg thing. They were upset about the functionalities and they were upset about the fact that uh, Gutenberg kind of killed a lot of the custom stuff that people did for their clients, uh, specifically uh, with short codes that had certain functionality and it kind of killed it for them. So some people uh, don't want to go back. Uh, they don't want to move forward with it. They were like, you know what, I'm on, I want to stay with, uh, with the classic editor. So WordPress as a solution in order to please the masses, uh, they offered the classic editor. So it's important that you know these differences because uh, sometimes you can do stuff with the classic editor that you can't do with the Gutenberg editor and vice versa. So in order to have both, because you can do that, uh, you have to go out of here 
and you have to install the plugin, which is, uh, I think I already have it installed because I did my practice here. It's called the classic editor. Uh, so if you go here and you add a new, uh, be over here. It's uh, right here. It's right at the. It's right. It's right on the first ones when you search for it. There's a lot of backslash over it because a lot of people, as you can see from the amount of installs, it has over five billion installs. Uh, it's it's very popular. People don't want to go back uh, to the uh, to the new editor. So you may want to do that, or you may want to shift back uh, to Gutenberg. So in order to go back uh, to the classic one, you go to settings over here and you go reading and i'm sorry writing and you define uh default you know the default editor for all users is going to be the block editor or the classic ones and if you allow uh users to switch editors so it's important that you have this as yes and if you want to do that you just go if you want to change uh for example to classic editor you just go over here you hover and you go back and you click on the uh classic editor if i click this is going to change it and now I have the old thing back, which in this case, it's not very fancy. Uh, let me support a new one. Okay, I'm gonna go back here. And this is the classic editor. So as some of you may know, may recognize this. This is a, a short code. So this is something I do with the site. Uh, we're gonna get back to these short codes in a bit, but this is how the classic editor used to look or still looks and people might prefer that. So again, it's important that you know this. Okay, so next up, uh, we're gonna talk about posts and pages you know what the differences are uh usually when we uh, start uh you know creating wordpress uh um, out of the box or built in into wordpress are posts and pages okay but most people don't know what the differences are and they start either adding stuff into the pages when it should be posts or vice versa so i'm going to explain both uh, a little bit uh, in detail so I'm gonna go here into time versus timeless. So what do I mean by that? Okay, uh, by default, uh, if you think about it, a blog, uh, a blog post is time-based. Uh, by that, I mean that usually when I, or let's go for the example of a newspaper. A newspaper is time-based. So when I visit the newspaper's website, or I see the, world, the newspaper, I should have the current news, the fresh news, the most important news, anything that's new you don't want to see the old stuff uh, so that stuff gets shifted you know it gets gradually shifted back as time goes by and as new news are added so a blog works exactly like that so if we go to our uh, website over here to our blog i'm using the 2020 theme but you don't need to use that so <laughs> okay so if i use that uh and if i go and add a new post uh, called uh, content is king. Uh, for example, here, uh, content is king. So if I add that and I just write, write some content. So if I do that and I publish this and I go back to my uh, site over here, I'm going to see that this is the newest entry. And what I had previously, this is part of the practice I did, but I still left it there. So uh, this is. Um, it gets shifted so everything gets shifted below and it that's that's one of the key differences that posts have that pages do not okay so pages are more static and let me go back to pages in a way that uh let me delete this this and uh, yeah let me delete both of the trash okay so pages are timeless in the way that pages are more or less, more or less a thing of set and forget. Like, uh, you know that for a fact that if you want to edit something, you go back to the page and you just edit it. You don't need to go and you don't need this to shift and uh, have more content added as time goes by. So this is important because if we go back into our museum example here, you could more or less infer what are what things behave as a page and what things behave as a, a post. So if we go back to our museum example and I see the events of things to see and do, I'm like, okay, events are definitely time-based because I'm adding new events as time goes by. So I need to add more and more and more events. So I'm, 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 I'm looking here for behavior, okay? So the events behave like posts. So 
they don't behave like a page. I mean, I'm not going to write a page and start adding the events, you know, because that's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be like a huge list of events as time goes by. You want this to roll or to flow exactly like this. So at the newest events are at the top. Okay. You could, yeah, sure. You could do that with pages, but as time goes by, you're going to have like this huge list of things and maintaining that it's going to be really, really difficult. So, if we look at this and we're like, okay, music events, how does music events behave? It also behaves as uh, a time a time thing. But if you, for example, uh, go into support us, if you're going to support us and you're like, okay, support us and the client told you, the museum uh, customer told you, okay, support us will have information as to how to become a volunteer. And uh, the fundraising part will be about fundraising events that we're going to have. So I just said a keyword again, I said events. So that again is time-based. So out of the two, you could say, okay, volunteering is going to behave as a page because it's just gonna have information as to how to volunteer and fundraising is gonna behave as an event because I'm gonna have the fundraisers, I'm gonna have previous fundraisers in there and I'm just gonna have information that, uh, you know, is gonna change as time goes by, okay? So it's really, it's really important that you think about that because some, you, you're going to have to decide what is going to behave like a page, what am I going to put inside the pages, and what am I going to put inside. So again, posts behave time-based and pages behave uh, timeless. The second item would be social. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, well, when WordPress started, uh, it was a blogging platform. So you, a blog was uh, more or less like uh, my log of my life. So I could, uh, you know, put my thoughts out there. Because, uh, you know, as humans, we, we have the, uh, the never ending need of people to listen to us. So uh, back in the day, like uh, 15 years ago, you couldn't uh, post your thoughts online. There was no Facebook, there wasn't anything like that. Well, actually there was, but th it wasn't really popular. So blogs uh, allow you the possibility to do that. So they have the social component. And by that, I mean that uh, you, you can add comments to it. So discussions would follow up on blogs. There were blogs about cooking. There were blogs about traveling. There were blogs about this and that. So they still have that ability. Uh, blogs still have the ability to be social in the way that you can add comments to it. I mean, Facebook is all about social. I mean, it's a social network, but uh, blogging had that. And uh, you could post comments and you could uh, do all sorts of stuff with it. So blog posts, posts have that ability. So the post here have the ability to have comments added to it. Pages do not by default. You could add it, but it's it's not, I mean, what are you gonna comment about a page, you know? So really uh, post, uh, blog posts have the social component behind them that makes it different uh, from pages, okay? The third item I wanna touch is categories. Uh, we mentioned previously that uh, in this slide over here that, and I'm sorry, uh, this slide over here the second point was categorized so we have the need we could categorize comment uh, uh, posts allow us to categorize comment uh, content so we can split that into different uh, categories and we could say okay i could uh, let's go back to our museum example over here so music events it could it, and that's another uh, uh, reason to view the event pages, the music events as blog posts, because the event pages, uh, the music events could be labeled into different types of music. So I may be interested in jazz because I personally love jazz, but uh, some people might be interested in rock, others might be interested in uh, salsa and I'm sorry, I'm a little old, so I don't know what's new. So, uh, so you could you could label the key point here is you could categorize that content and things to see and do also because I could be interested in sculpture, uh, for example, or not or be interested in Renaissance art and so forth and so forth. So blog posts posts over here allow you to do that. If you go here, you have the categories and you have the tags, uh, which we'll explain a little bit uh, in a in a minute. I'm not going to get into that in detail right now. It's part of the webinar, but not right now. So post allow you to do that okay and going back uh, here uh, you see that about the museum has a new section so a new section again it's something that is time and also something that I can categorize okay I could speak about uh, I don't know uh, communities and I define those categories when I'm doing the information architecture over here so when I'm defining the strategy, I define what my categories are going to be. What am I going to talk about? What am I going to say in this new section? Okay. 
So that's another difference that between posts and pages that uh, pages do not offer that out of the box. The fourth thing that offers is hierarchy. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, hierarchy uh, basically means a parent to child relationship. So uh, let's say, uh, for example, uh, if we go back to our museum example, uh, about the museum. So I could, our history and about the museum could have a parent to child relationship in a way that about the museum would have certain information that's related to the museum and the history of the museum could have different information that be both behave like pages. So they're both static, but I want the relationship to be father and child. So about will be at the top of this, of this flow chart over here and history is going to be at the bottom. So whenever I go to pages over here, I could add a child easily and I'm sorry, uh, my child, I could add my child easily over here in some content. When I go into the uh, attributes over here, I could go to the attributes here. You can ignore the template thing for now and you can define who the parent page is going to be. So in this case, I want this to be, uh, let's say sample page. So I want the sample page to be a parent of that and I just publish it. So that could be, uh, if you're starting with WordPress, you could say, oh, you know, I'm just gonna do music events and every event, a music event I'm gonna add, it's going to have a, it's gonna be a child of, of, of music events. Yeah, you could do that. But the uh, next thing you know, if you go back over here and you see this little stripe over here, this means that this is a child of, of sample page, next thing you know, you're gonna have, a, depending how much content you write, you're gonna have a bunch of, of uh, dashes over here that are gonna be related to sample page. So that's really not the, the best way to scale that because everything's gonna be tied to that and, and you, you won't have the, the social component and it's not, you won't be able to categorize that. So again, you have to think about whether something is gonna be a child or a parent relation or not when you're defining a, a chart such as this one. Okay, and the last uh, difference is RSS. <laughs> I usually laugh at this, but uh, I mean, some people, uh, uh, some people are as old as I am. Uh, back in the day, uh, when there was no Facebook, and uh, for example, we used RSS feed uh, readers. Uh, that was like a program that you had installed on your phone or on a tablet or your computer. And basically what it did is uh, you subscribe to people that you were interested in. So if I, for example, as a developer, subscribe to what another developer said, and I was like, man, this guy writes some killer content. You know, I want to I wanna read more when he publishes stuff. So uh, I would subscribe to his site via an RSS feed. And uh, whenever he updated the site with a new article, I would get notified via my reader and say, okay, this, uh, my, uh, this developer just published a new article. It's called this and this and that. And I could go and I could read it within my reader. I didn't have to go to his site. So it was a cool way of, you know, keeping current with stuff. And uh, I don't know if people still use it. I kind of stopped uh, doing that because, well, I don't know. It's, but I still include that because uh, RSS uh, readers subscribe to blogs to block uh, blocks yeah they do and uh, well if you definitely need to have that well then that's a good reason to go with RSS feeders okay so the next section uh, I'm going to discuss it's uh, it has to do with document settings uh, it's uh, with options that come out of the box uh, what does uh, what what are the document settings for both pages and, and posts okay so for that, I'm gonna go back into WordPress and I'm gonna back into post. So you may have noticed that whenever you're writing content in WordPress, uh, let me uh, post, let me grab this fellow over here. So whenever you're writing that, you may see something uh, over here and it has this bunch of options. So we're gonna discuss this uh, one by one, okay? So the first is status and visibility. Uh, the visibility thing has three options that you can change. It's either public, which is visible to everyone, private, only visited site admins and editors can see this. This is uh, particularly useful if you have private content, if you want something to behave, like if you have a membership site and you want people to be members and uh, they can only view that content if they're subscribed, if they have an account with you. Uh, they're, prop they're gonna be users within your WordPress uh, system. So you can change this on a post by post basis, or you can create something custom that's gonna be private by default, which we're gonna get there in a minute, okay? Password protected is pretty straightforward. Uh, I mean, do you need a password or not? In my 11 years of WordPress, I've never used this, uh, but chance you might have it. I don't know, it's up to you. 
uh, permalink uh, structure. Uh, this is uh, something that you can change if you are not happy. This sometimes happens to me when I am doing something new and I am like, okay, I want to add something at, uh, at my trip. Okay, I made a mistake. So if you go over here and you view your uh, slug, if you let's say you publish this and you're like, okay, I want to publish this now. And you are like, okay, I put add and it was supposed WordPress by default will take this uh, title over here and it's going to add this as your slug whenever you publish that. So if you, if you noticed, I made a typo, I forgot to add a D. I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I need to change that. So in here, you can, you know, customize your permanent structure uh, for that particular URL. So uh, it's important that uh, you change this if you make a mistake. Uh, just make sure uh, that if this exists already, WordPress is not gonna overwrite it. It's gonna add a hyphen, and I think it's gonna add a number. I think it's number two or something like that. So if you have two that are identical, because you can't have two URLs, they need to be unique. So if you update this, now your, uh, your uh, slug is correct and this can be modified and you're happy and everything's good to go. So you may need that in the future, you never know. Okay, uh, categories as we explained, uh, in here are the categories that I have. Uh, I'm gonna skip this for now and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that in a bit uh, when we're discussing categories and tags, just so you know, the, you can assign the categories for this particular blog post in here, okay? So uh, tax is the same. Featured image is something really cool. It, it, it depends on what your uh, template uh, has to offer. If we went to our news uh, site over here, you could see my face, this is, this is me. Uh, so you could add a featured image to every uh, particular post type. You could do that with pages, I think. Yeah, you can do, you can do that with pages. So uh, you, some themes will display a featured image for pages or uh, won't display an image, a uh, featured image for pages, but will display for blog type, uh, post type. This is something that you gotta uh, take into consideration when you are choosing a theme. I mean, do you want my blog post to have a, a featured image or not? I mean, it's more work to have a featured image, but it's also good for SEO because uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have images listed in your uh, in your searches, and sometimes your customers may come uh, through images. They not may not necessarily come to your site. Uh, via text. Uh, images is, is also an important thing. It's something we've all used. So this is pretty simple. I mean, you click on it and you just either upload a file or you select for a media library. I currently don't have any images. So, you know, I'm not going to put myself again. Uh, well, no, let's, look, let's, uh, let's use uh, specs over here. So I could, I could use uh, specs and I could do him. And I could just drag this guy over here. Nope. Just drag this guy over here and say, okay, I want specs to do. It's fairly important that you use the alt text uh, over here. It's important because like I said, uh, this is both uh, valid for use, uh, accessibility reasons for people using screen readers. It's an important uh, 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 demographic of your site's visitors. And it's also important because uh, search engines might uh, rank you for certain keywords uh, based on that particular image. So you never know. So Specs is our mascot, is our, our hosting platform. So going back over here, going back to our, our museum example, we may say, okay, do I want music events to have a featured image? You may say, yes, I want to have the cover image of the band or, or I don't know, someone singing, you don't know, but it, this is something you can think of and say, okay, I definitely want that. Okay, the excerpt, uh, we're gonna skip it over. We're gonna discuss that in a bit. Uh, it's in a nutshell, it's like a brief summary of what your uh, uh, page is about. Uh, this is important because sometimes uh, search engines will, uh, offer that uh, excerpt when it comes to uh, when you don't have anything set into your uh, title and your description, I'm sorry, uh, for SEO. Okay, so post attributes, uh, this has to do with templating, which we are uh, not going to discuss for now, but uh, that, that definitely doesn't come to case here. Discussions here, we can uh, overwrite uh, the comments, uh, as you may well know or not, I'm going to 
go that over here. If you go to settings and you go to a discussion over here, uh, you can close comments after a set amount of date. So let's say you do it after 14 days, all comments are closed. Let me save that. So let's say after 14 days, all your comments will close. So if you ever go here and you have, let's say this, this, uh, this, um, this uh, post is really popular and you can overwrite the setting over here and you can just allow comments uh, for that to uh, continue because comments in a way are adding some keywords or are adding more custom uh, content to your page and this is elevating uh, your keyword, uh, your, your content and in, within your post page so it's relevant, it might become relevant in the future so it, it all adds up. I like to think of it as a pyramid, uh, you know, you have the base at the very bottom and you build your way up so content, comments, uh, URLs, things like that, all add to the base of what is, you know, your, 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 uh, as your SEO rankings, your, you know, your cornerstone pages, your relevance when it comes to content. Uh, pink bands and trackbacks, uh, this is something that uh, used to come up uh, back in the day that whenever somebody uh, linked to your site, you would get, it would get notified in the comments section, but this is something that is really not uh, that important. So uh, all of this is, these are all the document settings that you may want to have control over when you are working with WordPress. Okay, let me, let me go back. So pages are pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference that they have is the uh, parent to child attribute that uh, I just I discussed here you can define who the parent will be of this particular page so that's really the key difference between one or the other I mean everything else is, is pretty much uh, the same uh, another thing that you can do you can change this and uh, you can change the dates if for example you made a mistake or you want this to be published at a future date okay so you can definitely change the date of this particular blog, uh, post or page I forgot to do that and you can move it to trash right here but that's really not relevant Okay, uh, next thing. Oh, so uh, we're going to discuss custom contents. I forgot to say that uh, we're gonna, we take usually take a little break so that you guys don't get bored and that we can have some discussion going. And, uh, you know, so I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to take a look at what you guys have asked. So how can I view that? Uh, I saw that somewhere. Uh, here we go. So the first question is by John, John Douglas Hall. He asks, my website lists events at which I give a presentation. I wish to know if there's a way to list events in chronological order. And if so, how do I get the events show in the order in which they will actually take place? Okay, by default, it should be chronological. Uh, you are asking you, I'm, I'm assuming that you are either, uh, it's not chronological or it's based on a different order. What is the order that you are getting uh, viewed? Because by default, it should be, um, it should be, whatchamacallit, it should be chronological. So if I were you, there's two ways to do it. You can either code that or you can use a plugin, which we're going to discuss in a bit, in order to serve this as a custom content, and you could more or less uh, set what the or how the order is going to be displayed. If it's going to be chronological, alphabetical, random, and whatnot. So, if I were you, I, I'm going to discuss this in the next slide. And uh, if that answers the question for you, you can change uh, to that uh, particular solution, and you can move your uh, events to that particular uh, plugin and work your way uh, with that, okay? Uh, the next question is by Jules Rocca. Are pages or posts better when considering SEO? Uh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, I would say no, no, it's, it's pretty much the same. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, both uh, have a more relevance because they are more time uh, based. So whenever uh, uh, spiders or crawlers crawl your site, they're going to give a greater emphasis into what your posts are because that's the stuff that's supposed to be updated more frequently. Pages uh, might get indexed a little slower because, uh, like I said, it's not it's something that doesn't change that often. Okay, next question is John Douglas Hall. I may be entering the actual lists in that order that will probably be different from the
okay, I did not really understand that. I may be entering the actual listings in an order that will probably be different from the order in which I want them to appear. So I often have to enter events in one in one order while ha then having them appear in the order in which they will take place. I, I really don't understand that question. I'm sorry. You want okay? I see. I see the. I see. I see. He uh, says again. I want. I you want your order to be alphabetical or you want your order to be chronological? Okay. If you could type that again, please. I would really really appreciate it. So you want your order to be either alphabetical or you want to be chronological because WordPress can do both. Chronological, Marco. He wants to be chronological and currently has it as alphabetical. Yes, he said, yeah, it's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's really weird because are you using a particular plugin uh, for that? Uh, John, are you, how, how are you, how are you, uh, okay, there's two solutions I can think of. Are you using a custom post type or are you using the blog? What are you using? What is, what did he say? I can't see. Oh, I can see the chat. Oh, it's in the chat. Yes. Uh, let me open that. Uh, what did he say? Okay, I need to know where are you having these events? Are they part of your blog or are you using a custom content for the events? You're using custom. So are you using a plugin? Okay, then I would suggest to go to your custom, uh, uh, custom post type uh plugin and see for that particular custom post type if you can actually edit how they are displayed if they are displayed alphabetical or chronological okay uh I th the solution that i'm going to use i think offers that so well you could use the events calendar yeah but uh, you could also use just a custom post type called a uh, plugin and then create a custom post type called events but yeah, that's also a solution to use a, an events calendar. That's that's definitely doable. Okay, I've been establishing my, uh, the next question is by Verna Jigur. I have been establishing my, wait, where did it go? Oh, here it is. I've been establishing my page hierarchy via the menu. How does that compare where, with establishing pages as child pages? I. I well, but that's the thing, you are creating a menu that's not necessarily uh, the the relationship. Uh, it's that you're not defining the relationship if you're doing that via the menu. You're just defining a menu that's going to have a parent item, and the median items are going to be children. So the main difference with that is that uh, the URLs are going to stay uh, the same. They're not going to change because of the parent-child relationship. If we go back over here and we go back to pages. And for example, you see my child. Uh, let me open this in the editor. If you go to permalink and you see that the URL reads, uh, this is my this is my uh, URL for, for, for this uh, demo, or for this webinar, but the URL structure is sample page backslash my child. If you go to the menu site, you are not necessarily defining that relationship, the page will remain, if it's not a parent to child, it will remain as my child. So the fact that you do it on the menu doesn't mean that this will uh, translate to that, to this URL over here. So those are two different things. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, Eric Bachmann, what is the advantage of disadvantage of classic versus block editor? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> uh, personally, I am in the camp that I absolutely love this uh, uh, Gutenberg editor. I think it's a, a great step forward. I think it's a, it's a great, great uh, thing to have. I thought the editor, uh, the previous one, the classic one was uh, stagnant. Uh, let me go back. Uh, block editor. I thought the uh, 
this this thing over here it was stagnant i mean it has it had over 10 years of being present there's not a lot of stuff you could do with it and i think this over here uh is the future because first of all wordpress is going to go this route where you can build your entire website within this editor which is something that a lot of people want and they are not necessarily technical uh, about uh, WordPress, but they do want to have uh, some say as far as the decisions, design decisions are concerned in order to customize this because we all want our site to be different, even if we're working with themes. I mean, I, we, I, I know uh, sometimes uh, the designs may not look as good as others, but uh, the thing is we want to customize our stuff. And I think uh, the route that WordPress is going with is to, to be able to customize stuff, such as your color settings, your background color, and things of that nature, I think that's uh, moving forward. And after all, uh, I, also believe, and I also believe that a change is, is, is incessant. It's a part of life. And we, uh, WordPress, can't stay as a platform that's going to offer the same editor for more than a decade. And I think that people that are against it, and I don't want to criticize anybody, I think sometimes feel that people want to stick to what they know, and they're afraid of change, and they are afraid of, 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 of you know, they want to, you know, they want to grab on to what, what was there because it worked. And I think that, uh, you know, platforms grow, you learn from mistakes, but you can also increase the, the experience, you can get it right and move forward with it. So personally, I think uh, the block editor is better, but there's no real advantage. In the end, uh, both get uh, saved in the database and both will have markup. Uh, it's just that the stuff that you can do out of the box with the block editor, it's, it, it, comes, it has no comparison based to the classic editor. Okay, uh, Phil Ward. Use the date to publish and set the date to, to be, or use the ID. Okay, that was, just, that was more or less a help for John. Uh, event. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Phil Ward to John Solution. Use the date to publish. Okay, that was a solution to John, correct. Uh, Joe Heeman, event A posted. Okay, uh, to answer that question, there's two ways to do it. Uh, I, <laughs> what I would do if I were you, I would change these uh, dates over here and I would make sure that perhaps C, let's say I published B before C and I'm like, okay, I'll definitely want C to appear before B. Man, that would sound really weird, but uh, you get my drift. So I would uh, edit C over here and I would leave the days as is, but I would modify the hour perhaps a few minutes before B. So this way event C will appear chronologically before event B. That's what I do when I when my client asks like, oh, how do I order this? So I'll just change the dates a little bit by the minutes and, I'll, and that's like a quick dirty secret that I usually do to get it out of the way. Okay, uh, next question, Martin Dolny. Hi, Marco, can you please cover how you connect, build a relationship between page and a post? You, you may see it, there's, it, there's a things to do and see page will, will list some permanent exhibition at the museum, but then special events will also be approached. Okay, let me go back to, your, uh, to the museum example. Can you please cover how you connect and build a relationship between page and post, e.g. on your museum example, there's a things to do and see page uh-huh, but then special events, special events, where am I? Special events will be in a post. Where are special events? Where are the special, I can't see the uh, the events, Mark, the special events. Am I missing something? Uh, no. Okay, how do you build the relationship between page and post? Okay, on your museum page, there's a thing to do and see page would, would list some permanent exhibitions at the museum. And at the and on your museum, there's things to do and see page would, would list some permanent exhibition at the museum, but then special events will be in a post. Okay, okay, uh, this is, okay, I see what you're saying. And we're going to cover that in, in custom content. So things to see and do, 
you yeah you in a diagram you look at this at the parent to child relationship but uh, when we're going to cover this in this slide called custom content over here so we're going to create a custom content page and what's that what that's going to do is that the things to see and do is going to be like the archive page it's going to be like the wrapper and the event pages are going to get added there chronologically so the things to see and do is going to be your your parents it's it's really a yeah it's your parent and the event pages are going to get listed as child as blog posts automatically as you add them so we're going to see that in the custom content section in, in, in further depth. Um, the next question is by Patricia Galdames. When I started building my website, I purchased a theme that came with its own editor, SKT editor. I've added pages with the classic better. So now I have a mix. Is there a way to merge everything so I can use the classic or Gutenberg editor? I think so. Uh, you could do that. Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can do that, you know. Uh, bulk actions? No. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I think you could do that over here, and you can hit the quick edit. No, I'm really sorry. I thought I thought for a second because this this I what I was doing over here is you could uh, there's this is a, a th sometimes I have to do this. Uh, let me zoom this a little bit. Sometimes you can select multiple posts and you can go over here. You want to select all, I selected all these four and I could edit them and hit the apply button and I could edit them all four at once. But you can't do that. You can't edit the editor over here. You see, I, I can't do that. I don't have that option. Uh, you might, you might have a plugin that does that for you. I don't know, but I, I can't, uh, I can't say yes or no that I would have to do some research but no you can't do that so if you can't I'm sorry you're gonna have to be stuck and doing it one by one you're gonna have to uh, switch the, the editor to the classic editor and, and so forth and so forth I'm sorry sorry <laughs> okay uh, divine okay does Google crawler see a subdomain of a website as a do yes it does it does yes Yes. Sorry, it was so short, but yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, I'm a Microsoft fan and only use their items. Is there a way for me to just use Microsoft and have to do with Google? Uh, I think, uh, Charlie, uh, I think that. Uh, Yes, uh, I think, uh, Charlie, you could uh, go to the classic editor over here. You can go to the classic editor. And I think they have this option because you can toggle this. It's called the kitchen sink. You can toggle that and you have this option here. It, there's something called uh, Word. Uh, let me see if I... Let me see that work. Let me open Word because I'm not really, I'm not a mic, I'm not an even a Microsoft or a Google fan. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, let me see that. Uh, um, I'll write some content, some text. I think they used to, but I'm not sure anymore. But let me try it. You know, you never know. Let's see. And let me increase this to 20. And let me use the. Okay. Okay. No, I think you can just copy and paste this. No, you can't. Paste is now in plain text mode. Content will now paste the plate until you cover. If you're looking to paste rich content from Microsoft, try turning this option. Okay. Let's turn it off. Okay. Let's go over here. And let's copy this. No, you can't do that. But uh, yeah, sorry. They took that out. They used to have it. But uh, I, I, I usually, well, since I'm a developer, I took that option off because I didn't want my clients to alter the, the layout of the, of the page by using Microsoft Word. But perhaps you could do that. I, I'm not sure. If not, you could per also try the possibility to see if there's a Gutenberg block that allows you to do that as in the way of a plugin. Okay.
Okay, Cliffy Tillick asks, would it be possible to let super users admin content use classic but have new pieces? <laughs> Only use Gutenberg editor? Uh, I think so. I think so. But you're going to have to get dirty and uh, uh, you're going to have to get dirty and code this. You're going to have to code this in and you're going to have to modify the capabilities that the user has. So the roles, you're going to have to modify that role. So perhaps you could do that by default, uh, setting that so that admins can use the classic one, but, uh, you know, editors and whatnot will use Gutenberg. That's a really good question. I, you know what? I'm going to write that down because you never know how, when it's going to be useful. Admins, uh, Gutenberg, uh, users, classic. Okay, so I'm definitely going to find that out for you. Uh, let me see, because you can't do that here. You can't, uh, when you write here, yeah, you, you can only have, you can only allow them to do that. So you would have to toggle this no, and you would first have to toggle this no so that users uh, can't do that. And yeah, the default editor I would do for all users, I would use the classic, and then I would ask either a hook or a filter or something to see if the users can overwrite this setting. Yeah, that's what I would do if I were you. But you wouldn't have to get dirty and code. Uh, okay. Did you want to mention sticky notes to order or put some? Yes, I actually do. This is something I kind of forgot. Uh, sometimes uh, you want a post to appear at the very top and disregard the order of this, the time order. So, for example, let's say content is king. You could modify this and you could post this as a sticky, but where do I, uh, what do I do that? I forgot. Public, no, 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 no. Public, no, no, no. I could go over here and I think I have to edit this. Quick edit and where is, okay, here it is. Make this post sticky. If I go over here and change that, that's also, uh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, you can edit your posts uh, here within the uh, list of posts. You can do that and you can either hit, you can quick edit it and you can edit some uh, stuff like right without entering the actual post. And you can do that out of like straight right there and then. And one of them is to make the post sticky. So what this does is that whenever I update this and I go back here, uh, where's my site? If I go back to my site over here and go here, this is now sticky as labeled over here it's sticky post so this is important if you want something to behave like a sticky post and uh yeah that's really really useful sorry and uh, i think that's it because that is look at blog post in word look at blog post in word. that's that's not a question is it no that's not a question marco yeah yes Erica. we have a more questions in the chat we have a question oh from box bob box sorry any comments on block editor versus db editor <laughs> eh, <laughs> i have uh, no i i have no comments because I, I i don't use builders a lot i i i i am more of a code kind of guy so i prefer to stick to the editors I do this because uh, when I work with clients, I want to give them the least amount of privileges, like uh, who suggested that? Um, someone with the users, you know, like uh, I don't want my client to get into the DV editor and make changes and potentially break the site. So I prefer to not use builders because of that. So I, I really can't get you a comment on that. Okay, thank you. And we and have wait, I, I see here. something. My okay. question at Michael Peace asked the question. So I want to see what this question was. It says it was overlooked. Well, Erica um, has a list of all the questions. So are oh, you yeah, do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Then okay. Go back to the Q&A because there's more question in the Q&A. But let's do the okay. chat. <laughs> let's look at the chat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. We have a, another question from Eric Bachman. What is the advantage and disadvantage of classic versus block editor? I think um, classic versus. I think that, I think that question was asked already, but from a technical point of view, there's no disadvantage. They are both, the technically speaking, they're both uh, pieces of information that get stored in a database. 
the difference is that the Gutenberg editor gets stored a little bit differently than the, the, the other one, but uh, there's no advantage or disadvantage uh, from a technical or a performance point of view. It's just a matter of preference and what you can do with it. Uh, I feel that you can do more stuff with the Gutenberg editor. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we have another question from Kenneth Wilson. How does a child page appear on a parent's apparent page? How does it appear? Uh, from a URL perspective, it's going to inherit uh, the slug of the parent. So let's say I have mysite.com backslash parent and the child is called child. So the URL structure is going to be site.com backslash parent backslash child. So again, from an SEO perspective, you may want to have that and you may want to have that relationship because uh, that's important to you. It's important for search engines. It contains rich keywords. So when you add a child page, it's going to maintain that uh, hierarchy. So that could be important for you. It cannot be important for someone else. It, it really depends on what your need is. But uh, that's more or less uh, how it appears. It appears with that slug. Uh, Menu-wise, it doesn't add anything. Uh, you could override it still, but that's, that's, that's how it, it appears. They're both two different pages, but they're linked together via that relationship uh, within the URL, within the permalink structure. Okay, thank you, Marco. We have another from Derek. Are there any disadvantages to using the Elementor plugin to build a site? To what? <laughs> Are there any disadvantages to using the Elementor plugin uh, to build a site? Uh, well, I am not an Elementor expert. Uh, I would have to bring in my dear colleague, Lydia, who loves Elementor. Elementor and DV are page builders. Uh, so let's, let's, let's explain that to, to everybody. So what does that mean? That means that whenever I go and hit, uh, for example, my sample page over here, I can build everything within that. I can build, uh, you know, I can, I can uh, build, uh, put videos, put galleries, put uh, content here. You know, I can actually drag and drop stuff and that's going to grab all of that and that's going to compile a code uh, in my website. So some people prefer that because you can have your custom layouts and you can have your custom stuff um, baked right into the editor. So that makes it really, really powerful. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, they don't use neither the classic editor nor the Gutenberg. They use a different type of, of, of thing and it gets saved as code and it's just uh, on the website itself, it just spits that out. So it's really, really uh, popular for people who want to have uh, their designs, they want to have their stuff, uh, but they don't want to code it into the WordPress uh, part of it. So that's what Elementor and DV do for you. So it's really, really powerful. Uh, we are definitely, definitely, most likely very, very high chance of, of doing webinars that are uh, builder orientated. I have personally not used them in my 11 uh, years of experience because mm -hmm. I code and I implement this into a WordPress as a custom theme. I usually, I do custom theme development for clients. And I, there's two things, there's, there's two things I did, I don't, well, three things actually, three things I, I, I don't particularly uh, like, but I respect people that do. The first is the privileges that the client has. I'm afraid that the client will break the site when he's editing that stuff. Um, so, you know, I prefer not to give him that. I, uh, I prefer to give them the least amount of things so that they can't break the site. The second would be performance. I sometimes feel that uh, builders, they take a hit, a serious hit on performance. Yeah, you could mitigate that by ha offering more power in, as far as resources is concerned uh, from your hosting provider. 
but uh, out of the box, I think performance wise coding that yourself is, is way faster than, than having that all compiled into files, uh, usually JavaScript files. And that takes a really, really hit on, on when you are requesting stuff. And the third, well, I'm, uh, I, I, this, it's been my bread and butter to do custom theme development. So I don't want to move to, to build this yet, but I will say, um, this is also a discussion that's been going on a lot that, that WordPress itself is going the way of competing directly against uh, Elementor and DV in the future because it's really, really popular. And there's no denying about that. And that's what people want. And, uh, you know, WordPress is taking note of that. And I think the route that they're going to take is exactly that, but offering something lighter and, and uh, well, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, if, so if they're going to prevail or not, but it's an interesting thing to see because, yeah, I think that's the direction WordPress is taking. Okay, thank you, Marco. And I think the last question in the chat is, what are the best resources to learn coding? coding? Uh, I use Udemy. Uh, I'm going to type that, Udemy. I use Udemy. I love Udemy. Uh, some people like Linda, or what's now LinkedIn, and some people like Pluralsight, but I absolutely love Udemy. And I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, in Udemy, you, you buy your courses. So let's say you want to buy a development course and you're like, and usually they have really good prices and you buy that course and you can watch them later. Uh, with Pluralsight and Linda, you have to buy a subscription month to month. And well, we are all adults here, I assume. So we have work, we have children, we have errands, we are in the middle of a pandemic. And sometimes we can't uh, learn at the pace that we would like to. So when you're buying a subscription, you're kind of paying for something you're not particularly using. So I prefer to buy it. And if, if I don't have time, it's going to be there. But whenever I do, I didn't have to pay for the whole thing, the subscription on a month by month basis. So that's why I prefer uh, Udemy. Uh, I did see a question that I think you may have skipped. Uh, Uh, Carolyn Chen asks, can you point me to guidelines for what to put in alt text? Is this text also used for accessibility? Yes, it's absolutely used for accessibility. So I would say, and this is the rule of thumb, always use the alt text to describe what the image is about. Uh, you know, use that to describe. Describe it in words what the image is about. Uh, try not to think about uh, keywords. I mean, if they flow, they flow. But if they don't flow, make sure it's relevant. And I think that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of things about SEO and, 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 and people discuss and they want to rank, but sometimes I think uh, we just have to think about our users, you know, they, uh, they, they, you know, what's helpful to them, be helpful to them. And that's how you're going to get, uh, you know, better rankings. And wait, I created a good, good. Do so you want to go uh, back to question and answers? There's yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Go back the Divine Okereke asked if I created a custom CSS code for my website. If I use the classic uh, block to add cost of it, it won't have any problem. But if I use the Gutenberg to add the CSS, it doesn't really work well. I get an error saying invalid block. But uh, my question, uh, the, 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 uh, Divine, Divine, is are you where are you editing? Where are you adding this code? Because if I were you, I would either put that in a file and upload it to the server, or I could go to appearance, customize, and I would go all the way here where it says additional CSS, and I would put put the CSS code here. So, for example, h1 color red, uh, important, and let's see if that. Oh, let's do h2 because it's not grabbing anything. So if I were you, I would do that and I would publish that and I would make the changes in here. What is this? Why isn't this uh, grabbing? Let me see. Sorry if I'm doing the geeky stuff. Oh, this is because it's H2A. I will not select. It. So if I were you, I would do it this way. I would use my, uh, my custom, uh, I could just put the code here and preview it on my browser. Okay, like I did here. So I just change it to red 
And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's that. Please define better some of your terms, such as what is a sticky page? Okay, a sticky page is a page that sticks no matter what the chronological order is. So if I add, if I go to posts over here, at the very, let me unsticky this, is that a word? <laughs> let me unsticky that. Uh, so for example, let's, let's, go, let's go back here. So I have at my trip, content is king, my name, hello content and hello world. So going back, uh, where's my site? Oh, let me see. Okay, going here, going to my news thing, this is exact. This is like the exact same order. So let's say I love myself so much that I want myself to appear at the very top, my, my name. So I go over here and I quick edit this and I put this as sticky and I update that. And now watch what happens when I up refresh this. So now I disappear and I'm all the way at the top. So I am, my post is sticky. So this is, this is going to appear first, no matter what the chronological order is. So this is really, you could, this is useful. Uh, for example, like let's say this pandemic, uh, you know, let's say that the information about the pandemic changes a lot. So you want this post to be sticky because you want this to appear at the very top, even if I'm publishing new stuff. So uh, it's useful if you want to convey special information that you want people not to miss to appear at the very, very top. So overwrite that, so to speak, okay? What about post types? Uh, we're gonna talk about post types uh, in, in as soon as we're all done with this. Uh, templates, no, uh, but, but yes for future webinars because I am a WordPress uh, theme developer, so I'm into templates a lot. So we are, I hope, I, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that I discuss that because this is, this is like my bread and butter, so to speak. I absolutely love making custom templates out of WordPress. How does it physically appear on the page? If you're talking about the sticky posts at the very top, what is the best way to help many clients have a simple one page site? Uh, if I were you, Bob, I would go to build a route and create one page called home and just uh, lay that out and design that for them. If I, if I were you, if, if, yeah, yeah, that's what I would do. But if you know your design stuff and you know your WordPress stuff, yeah, uh, you could also do it. It's a little more complicated, but uh, if I were you, I would just do it uh, with a, a builder, DV, Beaver Builder, Elementor. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to start a fight here, but people have their, uh, they, they have their, uh, you know, preference, they have their flavors. Can I enable, uh, Samira Pillai, can I enable adding of blog posts for my clients without them logging into WordPress? Uh, yes, you can do that, Samira. You can do that with the REST API. Uh, let me write that here. REST API, this thing over here. Uh, why is it? Why isn't this zooming? Huh? Weird. Oh, right here. The REST API. This is. Uh, it's basically an API, and this allows you to extract the information and put this on an external site, like a static site. Uh, I don't know something uh, a backend coded in a different language. You name it. Uh, this is a really big thing on WordPress. You can even do mobile apps. Using and using WordPress as the engine to serve the content, and you just put this using the REST API. So you could do that. Uh, uh, yeah, you could extract the blog posts and filter them in the uh, in the website using the REST API. Okay, I'll take Cliffy Tillich's answer for. That is correct. Well, I kind of said, you know, be descriptive. Yeah, the hard thing is, is, is yes, correct. It's uh, Cliffy. What Cliffy Tillich says is absolutely correct. And uh, well, I'm not an accessibility expert, but uh, I'm learning because uh, I think uh, it's an ethical uh, thing. It's a helpful thing and I'm, you know, all about helping people and I think that uh, the web should be accessible to everything and everybody so uh, yes I have a plugin that adds the code 
but I need to manually call the code using class. Thanks for answering me. I have a plugin that adds the code. What, uh, what, what code is that? But I need to manually call the code using class in all posts. I do edit the first paragraph as HTML of all posts and add class to it. In classic, it shows well, but in Gutenberg, well, then perhaps if I were you, I would get a little bit into JavaScript and see if you can manipulate the DOM in, I'm sorry, I'm talking a little technical here, but uh, you, could add, you could use JavaScript and you manipulate the DOM uh, by grabbing what you need and defining that class manually uh, on page uh, load. So if that is not working, the Gutenberg stuff, and you wanted to do that, I would do that after the document loads, uh, you know, tap into the DOM, get the query selector, modify it, add the classes to your need, and then just uh, you know, watch the results. And the last question is, Styles Marco made some of the text look different in the world, but did not assign a style to it. When you cut and paste, an editor can keep the style, but strip the formatting. For example, if text is assigned style of heading one in Word, an editor could keep the fact that it's a heading and let the CSS make it look. However, a heading is supposed to look on that side, but it would ignore any formatting, like selecting text in Word in bold or changing its fonts. Yeah, that's, that's more or less what I did, correct. And I think we're out of questions. Well, we, <laughs> I'm a total novice. Oh, we have one more. What is the best way to do a blog containing posts and pics for a beginner? Uh, well, Angela, that's a really uh, easy one. Uh, WordPress comes with a blog out, out of the box. So uh, if I were you, I would just start to write here all your posts, add new, and just write that stuff down. I, I actually, you know, I'm also going to take. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do some publicity here. Uh, we have a webinar. We have a. If you go to our webinars page, uh, we have a list of the previous webinars we had, and we had one uh, WordPress 101, um, which I I just I discussed that in depth on how to add posts and pics and stuff like that. So I definitely recommend you taking a look at that one. But to answer your question really quick, you do here, you write. You write, you type here, and you hit the uh, the little plus sign over here, and you use the image, and you just drag or upload, and just play with it. You know, uh, you do like this, and you do like that, and then you just publish, and that's it. You are done. But I definitely recommend you uh, viewing that webinar. It's really really cool. Uh, I don't know where the link is. If Erica and, and, or Anna can help me, I don't. Yeah, we'll find the link and put it in the. Chat. Okay, we, need cool. to, we need to move on. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really glad people are asking a lot of questions. So it's okay, great. Cool. Well, we need to yeah. continue. Okay, Maybe. so let, let's move, let's move forward. So uh, I'm gonna go back into custom content. Um, the options are endless. So what do I mean by that? Um, okay, what do I mean by that? So as I said previously, uh, WordPress comes with pages and posts out of the box, right? And uh, initially, when we're starting using WordPress, we may have the thought of we're going to put everything into pages, we're going to put everything into posts, and we are going to work our way uh, with that. And uh, But uh, you know what? I'm going to alter this uh, at the very last second. I'm not going to discuss custom content yet. I'm going to shift this little dude over here and I'm going to discuss categories and tags instead because I didn't, uh, I, it's important for custom uh, post types. So categories and tags are, as, as I mentioned before, there are ways for us to organize information and label them and put them, uh, put them um, in a box, so to speak, in a category, in a label. So when I start my post, my blog post over here, I could uh, define what the categories are going to be by hitting this categories uh, thing over here. So if you take notice, I've created all of these categories and they are related to my blog. So when I'm defining my strategy and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to have a new site. So I, I have to ask the question, okay, how am I going to label my content? How am I going to uh, 
hold on, let me close this. Otherwise, I start answering questions. So, uh, how do I label the content? How how can I categorize that content? So, this is something that you need to define before you start uh, using your WordPress site. So in this uh, fake example, or this site, I have news, I have sports, I have programming, PHP, and social. I have uncategorized, which is what WordPress comes at, uh, by default. You can change that in case you wanna uh, you wanna overwrite that. You can go here, and I think it's the reading part. Uh, no, it's the writing. Yes, what is the default post category? So you wanna do that in the event that uh, you want to have that every time you write a post. So by default, WordPress uses the uncategorized uh, label, which I think it's, uh, eh, I don't like it much as a label, but uh, you know, some people actually do. Um, so you have your set of categories over here and you are okay. So more or less you go to your uh, posts over here and you write and you assign your categories in here. So the categories will be visible here. You can do that, you can check, uncheck, and you can do whatever you want, and you can add new categories on the fly. That's what makes WordPress so nice. But WordPress also has tags. So what is the difference between tags and categories? Okay, I would say the first difference uh, between uh, tags and categories have to do with the fact that tags don't have a parent to child relationship as uh, categories too. If you can see here, I have news, I have sports, I could add international, economics, uh, celebrity stuff, oh, entertainment, uh, stuff of that, art, uh, whatnot. The category uh, tags don't allow me to do that. So when would I use tags and when would I use categories? So categories I would use if I want to have a parent to child relationship and tags I would use if, if I want to uh, describe something in one word. So for example, uh, let's say uh, the difficulty, how, how is this for, let's say I wanna define uh, the expertise of this uh, blog post. So this is going to be for beginners. So, yeah, this is a beginner. So I set the tag as beginner. I could have, I could have beginner, uh, medium and expert, but I can't have both at the same time. So, you know, I define this tag as beginner and uh, yeah, that's that's more or less the difference between one or the other. And hold on, I open this. And uh, hold on, I was this one thing I want you guys uh, to 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 look. So okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. No, it's fine. So yeah, that's being more or less, uh, you know, what the differences between each are. So as I said, a post, blog posts, posts allow you to do that and pages do not. So when you are defining your strategy, make sure that you have your ways of knowing which categories are going to go in there. So going back to a museum example, uh, you have here uh, the news section on the top left and you have the things to do and see and the music events and each will have its own categories. Uh, yeah, because the, the rest doesn't. The fundraising may have categories or may not, or may have tags, but these are the things that you need to think about. These are the labels that you need to define when you are coming up with a content strategy. Okay, so I wanted to discuss that before because we are going to go with custom content, which is, uh, which is really, really, one of the things that I think that make WordPress so powerful. So when when people are starting uh, using WordPress, they, they're gonna stick to what's uh, out of the box. They're gonna use posts and they're gonna use pages. And sometimes, because you may say, okay, uh, I want to have a blog, um, I have a blog post, but let's say you wanna have a section called um, events. Okay, so you have your blog, you have your blog with your news and you're discussing all that stuff. And all of a sudden you were like, okay, I need to have events. I need to have events. And you're like, man, how do I do that? How, how can I do that? How can I add that to my WordPress site? So your first uh, solution would be to say, okay, you know what? I'm just going to put this all into my posts over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two categories. I'm going to have one called events 
let me delete all of this. Let me delete this. Uh, delete. By the way, if you do that, if you delete this, it doesn't mean you're deleting the post. Uh, another cool thing about it, about viewing this in this view, is that if you hit the view over here, you can have the URL of all the news, uh, all the all the blog posts that fall under the category news. So this is something that you can grab and you can link into your menus should you have the need to do so. So let's say you want to uh, link people to specific categories, you go over here categories and you hit the view button over here and you just copy and paste that location or just open it in your browser. And that way you can go back into your menus, which we'll discuss in a bit and add that as a menu item. Okay, uh, you can also see the count over here. When I click over here, it's gonna show up all the posts that are under the news category. So if I click that, it's gonna take me to that and I'm just gonna view those, but uh, I'm, I'm deviating a little bit. So going back to our example, let's say I have a news, I already have my news uh, thing and uh, I'm putting all my blog posts in and said, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do an events and I'm gonna use events and I'm going to put all my events here. So you could do that. And all of a sudden, when you go back to your posts here and you add a new one, you pretty much have to define whether this is going to be an event or it's going to be a blog post. And that, 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 that can work, you know, that can really work. That, that might get you the job done and you can definitely move forward with that. The problem with that is that it's the same as adding uh, a post type behavior to pages. It doesn't scale well because you're gonna be stuck. First of all, you're gonna have the same URL for both and you may have different SEO needs for each. And the second uh, roadblock you're gonna hit here is that you're gonna to have to, if you're gonna to have to put the categories yes or no, and you sometimes may forget, or sometimes you wanna have different categories for each, or sometimes you wanna have uh, metadata about it. Uh, metadata is, uh, it's something that uh, it's a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, webinar, but it basically has to do of adding custom information to this particular post. Uh, let's say if I want to have a different a new uh, two images, if I want to add, uh, I don't know, like a radio button, like a select button, like more information related to this particular post. So when it comes to metadata, you're going to have metadata that's going to be related to both, to both news and to events. So that doesn't scale well. And let's say, for example, you are like, OK, and going back to the museum stuff, you're like, OK, I have news, I have events, but now I want to do fundraising. So you go and you do as expected. You would do fundraising. Uh, hey, what's happening to me? And you do this exactly the same, you know? So now you're bagging everything into your blog post and this is not going to scale well. So, and eventually you're going to hit a roadblock where you're going to have different needs for each of these and you just can't separate them because they're all into a blog post. So what do you do? So WordPress has a cool feature called uh, custom uh, content. And that's exactly the word that it, uh, it means. It basically means that I can have a fundraising, a fundraiser post type that is going to behave either as a post or as a page. So going back to our slides, it's going to be either time versus timeless, social, it's gonna either have categories or tags, it's gonna either have hierarchy or not, and if you wanna include the feeder, do include the feeder. So it's gonna behave like either a post or as a page. So, but it's going to be something custom with its own categories, with its own metadata, with its own uh, relationship, with its own stuff. So you are separating this and you are well on your way to make sure that this is going to behave exactly the way that you want it to. So go, I think someone asked a question about the parent to child relationship. So this, the event pages is going to have a archive page that uh, is going to display all the events. So what is an archive page? Uh, it's, it's, it's like this, an archive page. An archive page has to do with uh, the way WordPress templates stuff, the way it displays stuff. So what it basically means is that, uh, for example, 
uh, this over here, my post, my, uh, my, my, uh, my news section, this is an archive page. What it does is uh, it grabs the information based on the URL that you're requesting and it's gonna grab and it's gonna put the information it seems suitable for that particular URL. Expl <laughs> this explained in English terms means that if I have my site dot com over here and let's stick to the fundraising example and I do this I do this right if I have a custom post type called fundraising and I access this URL what it does is that this is going to grab WordPress is going to grab the archive page for this post custom post type called fundraising and it's going to display them all only the fundraising custom post types so it's not going to put the news it's not going to put the uh, pages it's not going to put the uh, uh, let's go back here it's not going to put the events news nothing of that nature it's just going to stick with fundraising and that's also a key feature because uh, if we stick to uh, like uh, the, the, what we're doing here if you look at the URL over here this URL is this and that's part of uh, let's put my site mysite.com. So as you can see, these two URLs are completely different. So if you ask me from a user perspective, from someone visiting your website, some, someone looking at search engine results, uh, they will infer better at this one as opposed to uh, this one. I'm sorry, let me uh, remove the content thing here. So this is how both are going to look. So if you ask me which one is better, from a SEO perspective, I would definitely say this one, because this is this this is not descriptive to the customer at all, to the visitor at all. But this one, however, is short and succinct, and it's going to say, okay, this is about the fundraising related to mysite.com. Whereas here, I could perhaps say, oh, this is a blog post that has the category of fundraising. So they read completely different. But going back to our archive example, WordPress behind the scenes. When you have a custom post type defined and you have this in your URL, WordPress is going to look and see if there's a custom post type called fundraising. If there is, there is, it's going to grab something called an archive page, which in turn will display all the post types that are related to fundraising. So it's the same if I do this or I do this. So if I do that, WordPress by default is going to say, okay, I have events. This word events in my URL. Is there a custom called type, uh, post type called events? And WordPress is going to say, yes, there is. Okay, so it's going to go through the pay, uh, template hierarchy. That's the word. It's going to look for all the te uh, file names in your template. And in the end, it's going to say, okay, give me the archive page because that's like one of the default pages. And it's going to say, okay, in the archive page, please display all the events that you have available in a chronological order or in the order that you specify uh, either when you code or when you're using a plugin. Okay, so the important takeaway here is that you can add your custom post types and you can pretty much separate that and you can have different functionalities uh, for each. So how do we do that? <laughs> uh, there's two ways. There's the coding way and there's the plugin way. Uh, I'm going to use the plugin way because uh, you know that's uh, that's the fastest one. And uh, I go over here to plugins, and I'm using this one called Custom Post Type UI. Let's uh, let's look at this so you can see it on your on your screens. So when I do that and I search for it, it's this one um, now. Let's 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 remove this keyword over here. So uh, let's remove this keyword over here. So why do I use this one? Well, uh, if you uh, attended my first previous webinar, uh, first webinar, I usually look at the stars, how how much people rate it, how many active installations does it have, uh, when was it last updated, and if it's compatible with my WordPress version or not. Well, this one isn't but I feel safe because the, the amount of active installations, I feel like, okay, this is definitely gonna work. So 
I'm going to go with this one. So I already activate it. So if you want to activate it, you hit the install now, and then you activate it, and you're going to see this UI over here. And this is going to open all the, the custom post types that you can that you either have, or that you wanna uh, that you wanna use. So in my situation, I already have the events. Uh, let me see if I can delete that, or you know what? I'm just going to use a different one. Okay, so. Going back to our museum example, uh, let's say I want to work with, so now we're tying the pieces together and we're like, okay, I want the things to see and do to be a custom post type. I want the music events to be a custom post type and I want the fundraising to be a custom post type. But how, but how do I want this to behave? I want this to behave as a post, all three. So I want them to behave as a post and I want to have the post type capability. So let's do the fundraising one. So I'm going to use the slug. The slug means this name slug, which is in turn going back to our, it's what is this URL going to be? What's my slug? Uh, when I go to my site.com, the slug. So in this case, I'm going to use fundraising. Okay. Uh, the plural label, uh, man, I'm not good with English. <laughs> fundraise service <laughs> and i think it's fundraising singular oh man i got grilled fundraising okay uh, if it's the other way around i apologize english is not my first language uh so it has th these are the mandatory settings that you have to use uh these are the labels as you can see uh, i'm going to scroll a little bit it's a lot of labels uh because wordpress is really uh uh cool and the way that you can actually edit these labels. So what are these labels used for? If you go to posts over here, you see the all post, add new. Uh, let's hit here, go back here. Add new, add new over here, search post button over there, uh, published, uh, all that stuff are labels. They're really, they're text labels. So you can edit them and you can define them in, in in these settings over here. If you have the time, do that. If not, WordPress will use default values. It's really up to you. Okay. The important part here is going to be the settings for this particular post type. Okay. So the settings, let's go over them one by one. Uh, the public, uh, if we remember over here, how do we want this to be by default? We want this to be public, private, or uh, protected, I think is the values. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. No, this is uh, what's going to be shown in the admin UI, if it's going to be shown here in the dashboard. So leave that to true, uh, publicly queryable to true. Uh, this has to do with theming, but just leave it as true. Show UI true. Okay. Showing the nav venues. Uh, this we're going to cover menus in a bit, but if we want to show this into in our menus when we create custom menus, yes. Uh, delete with users. Uh, whether if we delete a post, are we go, a user? Uh, are we going to delete the post that that user uh, did or not? Uh, usually, it's better to leave this as false because we want to keep the content, of course. Uh, show in REST API to answer the question I received previously. Uh, the REST API: Am I going to be uh, Is it going to be available for me to grab this? Uh, via the REST API or not. Uh, sometimes you want to do that, sometimes you don't. So these have to do with REST API stuff, which we're not going to uh, discuss. So has archived, this is really important. We want it to leave true or false. Okay, when we set to true over here, uh, that means basically this thing that I explained previously. So uh, the fundraising will look for an archive, will behave we'll look for an archive page and we'll display all the post type of called fundraising through an archive page. So if one doesn't exist, it's going to default as a blog. It, this has to do with templating, which I, I really don't want to get into specifics, but basically it means when we set that, we're going to say that fundraising is going to grab all of our fundraiser uh, fundraisers that we already have established. So we have to set this to true. Sometimes you want to set this to false. I can, this has to do with theming and, and you can do that any way you wish. Okay. Uh, what is the slug for archive URL? If you leave this as false, uh, if you leave this as default, it's going to be this one because that's the one defined in the slug over here. Okay. So let me minimize this. 
And let's move forward. Okay, capability type. Uh, come on. Okay, so capability type, this is gonna be a post. You leave that as, as, um, as is. But the important part here is, do you want this to have hierarchy, uh, do you want it to be hierarchical, hi, uh, hierarchical or not? Uh, the default is false. So if we go back into our slides over here, I said that there was a difference between hierarchy in posts and pages. So posts don't have hierarchy and pages do. So if I set this to false, this is going to behave as a post. If I set this to true, this is going to behave as a page. So remember, if I set this as a page, I cannot have categories. It won't be time. It won't have the properties that I need for it to behave like a post. So in this set regard, and going back to our uh, uh, thing over here, I definitely said that I want my fundraiser to fundraising to behave like a post because I want to display fundraisers in a chronological order. So I set this to false, okay? So uh, this, the rewrite slug, uh, WordPress is so, so, so cool that it allows you to rewrite the stuff if you are not happy with this URL. If you want, if you don't want this to be fundraising at all, you could say, okay, I want this to be, uh, let's say New York. Let's say you are into the SEO, you are into the SEO, you are into New York City, and you want this to be like half the keywords, New York fundraising, because this is this makes your URL structure a little uh, better. So I would you would do it like this, New York, I'm sorry, I did a mistake. So you do a New York fundraising. So now you have something uh, different. So you change that setting over here. So you rewrite that and you want this to behave New York. New York over here, okay? I think it's like that. I'm not really particularly sure, but we'll test it in a bit. Coastal post I'd love to use instead of the default, fundraising. I will do it like that. With front, uh... okay, yeah. Okay, with front, I would leave it as true. Um... This is all techie stuff that you really don't need. Show in menu true. Do you want to have an icon? And here is a, a setting that I also uh, use a lot, uh, the supports uh, setting. What things out of the, uh, what things do I want this to have? Uh, this, the, what, what, do I, what do I want? Do I, do I want to have the capability of having a title, which is uh, this? Do I want it to have the ability to have an editor, which is all of this, all of this below, like my picture, all that stuff. Do I want it to have the ability to have a featured image, an excerpt? I definitely want an excerpt. Trackbacks were already discussed. Custom fields have to do with metadata. Uh, do I want to have comments? Do I want to have revisions, order, page attributes, post formats, or none? So going back to, uh, reviewing them one by one. So we reviewed these, excerpts we'll review in a bit. Trackbacks have to do with linking. Custom fields is, as the name implies, do I want to have custom information that is related to that post type, yes or no? So for the fundraising events, uh, I don't know, you could have something uh, like the hour. Uh, you say, okay, I wanna have a custom field called hour, how long, or for, for our webinars, how long is this going to last? Uh, I want this to be a custom field where I put the number and people will know how many hours this is going to take. Uh, or for example, for the fundraising, uh, I don't know, uh, a rating system, how many stars, you know, the options are endless. This is something that you define in your strategy when you're first starting. Do you want people to comment? I definitely want. Revisions have to do, and this is something we didn't discuss, revisions have to do with uh, I don't have it here, but revisions are more or less a feature that WordPress allows you to have when you, for example, save a copy of that blog post 
uh, it's like a backup. It's like, let's say you changed it today. So you will, you will have a revision of that blog post before you changed it. Uh, that means you can go back if you make a mistake. Uh, I do have to say, be careful with the revisions because obviously it's going to keep a copy of that and that's going to bloat your database if you have a lot of revisions and you have a lot of blog posts or posts for that matter. So make sure that your revisions is kept to a minimum. Uh, I definitely recommend keeping it to maybe two or three, uh, not anything over that because it, it can uh, add you know further uh, stress to your database and slow your site down. Uh, the author, uh, who's the author, who the user is, uh, sometimes this is important because uh, you know, some people might be more popular than others and people want to follow a certain author and they, or you want to display that information about the author in that particular post type. Uh, page attributes, this will not work because this is not a, a what you would call it, this has to do with, uh, with the parent to child uh, relationship. I don't think you can click that one. Okay, that's a mistake, but okay. Uh, post formats have to do with templates. Uh, we would not want to discuss, but it basically allows me to alter the layout uh, on within that post. And none, well, it means none. <laughs> uh, so you define all this stuff over here. So uh, some people might say, well, why do I need to do that? Because, well, sometimes you just need the title, you just, uh, or sometimes you just need the uh, featured image. Uh, I use uh, the featured image post type a lot for sliders. You know, sliders, you know, they slide and they go like this. And sometimes it's just an image in a title. So I put title and featured image and I don't need the editor. So get rid of it, you know? So the options are for you to consider and you make a decision. And uh, taxonomies uh, is just a fancy word of saying categories. Do I want to assign categories with this yes or no? Okay, uh, we'll, we'll get into taxonomies in a bit, but uh, it's the same thing. You can add custom uh, categories, custom tags, and tie them to custom post types. And uh, you can do the fundraisers uh, event. Uh, I don't know much about fundraisers really, but maybe you wanna have a location taxonomy and uh, you want to work in the uh, New York uh, Manhattan Island and there's different boroughs I would assume like Soho uh, well I don't know much <laughs> I've been a couple of times Upper West Side Upper East Side and whatnot so you can have a taxonomy that's based on your location for that particular uh, fundraising so you define your taxonomies uh, you define them in here in the add edit taxonomies button but in here you can tie them together so let's say I don't want to do that right now. And you add the post type. So the fundraising post type has been successfully added. So if you go over here, you have the fundraisers option available to you. So now you click on it and you have no fundraising events added. So you add a new one called, uh, I don't know, uh, help Marco startup. Uh, okay, so I need 100k, please. Uh, wait, please. So you do that, and it has the same documents. It has the same uh, stuff, but uh, well, not all of it because I I kind of uh, took away some of it. And you publish that, and you update it. And if you let's copy the link over here and let's paste it. And it behaves exactly as this one over here. So I added the word New York because I felt it was important. I add the fundraising. God, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this has this. I made a small mistake. I added a hyphen. So that means that when I did the plugin stuff, I should have done this. So I go back here. I'm going to edit uh this one the fundraiser i go scroll all the way down and i go over here i did this this is a mistake i need to leave that as blank so i save that now is that going to update this that is the that is the question uh, let me write uh, whip is that going to update uh my fundraiser let me see it did. That's really cool. 
I love WordPress. So again, you can switch between uh, blog editor, classic editor, and it has all the same uh, stuff. But let's say, for example, you are like now, oh, I want to add a category. As you can see, there's no categories here. Or you can you can only just view all categories, or you can add a new one. So I changed my mind, and I'm like, okay, I want to add a taxonomy. So what's this taxonomy going to be called? It's going to be called a uh, burrow. Is that the right word? Uh, burrow. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's say no. It's this one. Sorry, English isn't my first language. So uh, location is going to be uh, burrows over here, and singular is going to be burrow. And now I have this attached to post type. So now I got to choose. As you can see, this has the WP core uh, between parentheses. That means this is, these are the built in uh, post types that WordPress offers out of the box. So WordPress offers posts, it offers pages and media, which technically is a post type. I mean, behind the scenes in the data, on a database level, on a database structure level, it behaves like a post type, uh, but it's, that's where you upload your stuff. Okay, so now I want this to attach to fundraisers. And he, these are the labels. Again, you can knock yourself out with them. I am not, I am not, because otherwise we'll take forever. Uh, the settings over here, they are important. Again, uh, the important thing here, hierarchical, yes or no. Hierarchical means, uh, do I want this to be like tags or do I want this to be like categories? So if I think about it, okay, there's not gonna be a burrow with, within a burrow. So I'm gonna say no, I'm gonna say no. I want this to behave like a tag. So I'm gonna leave this as false. And the thing I love is this. So custom rewrite slug, how, do we, how are we gonna rewrite this? So again, going back to our strategy, do you have an SEO strategy in mind or not? This may matter to you, this may not matter to you. So um, I may say, you know what? I like it like this. Uh, let's see if this works. Uh, I want this to be like, Uh, you know what? I'm just going to leave it as is. I think I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. So I'm going to leave this blank. I'm going to leave this blank. And by default, it's going to grab the, uh, the taxonomy that I create. Okay. So again, REST API, yes, no. And no, I'm going to go and do it. So burrow has been successfully added. So if I go over here, I have burrows. And now I can say, okay, I want Soho. Soho, I love Soho. I love New York, sorry. Uh, and uh, now let's say I want to have Upper West Side. Upper West Side. The slug, if I leave it blank, it's going to concatenate these three, by the way. You can do that if you're in a hurry and you're okay with it. You can always, of course, change that, but I love it. And that's all I know about boroughs in New York. <laughs> oh, they have Houston, I think. I don't even remember. But the thing is, uh, if I go to fundraisers over here and I go to my startup over there, now I have the Burroughs option available here. So what do I add? I'm going to go with Soho and this is cool. And now I update the stuff and now Marco's startup is categorized with the tag of Burroughs. So I can view this stuff over here and this URL, is, it's fine, it's, it's as is. But the thing that I want you to look at is how can I see the boroughs? Uh, how can I see what boroughs below, what posts have the Upper West Side, of, again, or the Soho borough? You hover over here and you go over here and you view them. So let me paste that so, because I sometimes feel that people can't see so it has mysite.com, Burrow, Soho. Now I may have added the word fundraiser to it. I may have done, okay, fun, but again, this is something that you define when you are, uh, let me close this, 
when you are going over here and you're defining the taxonomies here. I think, yeah, I think so. Let's 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 mingle with this. Let's let's uh, let's change this. I love that. Uh, let's change that, and we're like, okay, I want to rewrite this, man. I am like, okay, fundraisers grow. Ah, oh, bor borrow. Bor like this. Let's say fundraisers borrow. Let me see if that that's that's possible. Okay, so let's save this taxonomy. It said yes. And now let's go back to Burroughs. Let's refresh this. And let me see this. Oh man, I love WordPress. Okay. And now my... I could have added the word New York to it as well. I should have done that, but I forgot but I got so excited. So you could do that. So again, you are modifying the structure to suit your needs, to suit your business strategy, to suit whatever it is that you are gonna need. Okay, so this makes it really, really powerful. Okay, and uh, let's see. Okay, and so this plugin is really, really nice. And I, th I forgot the question. What was the question someone had? Oh, how can I display them? Uh, does this thing offer that? Well, let me see tools. Let's see on the tools. No, go, no, no, it doesn't. Not support, register types and taxes. No, these are all the, uh, these are all the, the, the variables. Mm, true, 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 true. True, true, capability, post, hash string, rest controller class, description, fundraising, archive name, examples. Now it doesn't, unfortunately, that's, 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 uh, that's an oversight of this plugin. You know, they could have added as a, as a feature that you can actually uh, display that option if you want to overwrite that. I, that's what I would have done. But it does. It shows. It seems to me that it doesn't show and rest. Show you and I loop. No, no. So no. Okay, but I did see. You know what? Let's try it. You know, because I never give up. So uh, let's add a new. Because when I when I did this, I saw something here. I wrote that and I saw that and I was like, see, simple custom post order. Order post, post any custom post type using drag and drop sortable JavaScript. Configuration is unnecessary. So let's dig in. Let's do this. Uh huh. Let's do that. Uh, okay, the plugin's activated. And where are you? Are you under settings? Yes. No, I want fundraisers. No, no, this doesn't work. That's really, that's a bummer, you know? Yeah, it's a really bummer. No, I can't order that. Okay, so that means that it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna get rid of this plugin. Remember, uh, where are you? Deactivate and delete what you don't use okay so i'm going to delete this because this doesn't work so i'm just going to get rid of it okay so i think that's it for custom content so he, again with a few i could have done the, the 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 other two the events i already did events by the way i have it right here my events i have it right here so picasso guernica and all that i have the activities uh, music rock sightseeing sculpture and all that stuff so again Going back to our thing here, uh, I, I'm covering all of this with custom post type. Like about the museum, I think that's a static page. That this is something that WordPress out of the box can do. Uh, visiting the museum, again, I believe that doing a page called visiting the museum and having a map by getting there, uh, information about opening hours and the contact information, this is something that can be done statically. This is timeless. So. I don't, I don't need to do anything. 
uh, things to see and do. We already did this by creating a post type called events. So I'm taking care of both. I'm going to have one called events. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make music events and things to see and do categories of that. So I'm splitting that content because I think this is going to, this is going to do it. The museum shop, uh, this is a tricky one because I think if uh, I was a designer, I was a developer, and let's say I landed the, 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 the contract, I would definitely do this as a WooCommerce uh, sh uh, 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 shop, and I would put the products that the museum has to sell in my WooCommerce, and I would take care of using the WooCommerce plugin. So I would do the. I would not do a custom post type called uh, uh, sh uh, store like uh, page products, but instead I would use the uh, WooCommerce plugin. Learning resources. This is a good one because. How does this, how do the learning resources behave? Are they behave, do they behave like a post? Do they behave like a page? If you ask me, they behave like a post because I am going to be constantly updating my resources. I'm going to add new resources. I'm going to add new stuff. I'm going to, you know, build on. If you look at the webinars that we have in Green Geeks, they also behave like posts because we're adding new webinars as as time goes by. So the learning resources, I'm thinking the same mentality. Okay, I'm going to add new uh, resources. I'm going to add new stuff. I'm going to be constantly updating this page with new stuff. So I'm going to do that. So the teacher resources and activity sheets, I think those two things fall under a category. They fall under a category. So I would definitely go the route of creating a custom post type called learning resources. And I would have a teacher resources and activity sheets as categories. Support us. Um, this is a good one. Support us. I would definitely do as a page, volunteering page, but fundraising would be a custom post type, which I already did. And I would just roll that into it and make sure it keeps uh, updating itself uh, automatically and make a donation by far this uh, screens a page timeless all over it because it's going to have bank information and it's going to have information that doesn't change a lot so I would say yes definitely a page please so with that using uh, all, all of that information that I have about WordPress I can make the decisions by looking at this chart and saying what is going to behave as what okay and that's one of the greatest things that I discovered when I was working with WordPress. Okay, so that's uh, it for custom content. So we are going to go into excerpts. I, I skipped it when we were uh, going on here. And what are excerpts? Excerpts are basically a short summary of what your uh, in, uh, post is about. So it has this little thing over here. And it's really, really a short description. Usually, uh, I would say 200 characters or less, a few lines, like maybe three, four lines at most in order to describe what this blog post is about. Again, this is good. This is good for you. This is good for your users and good for, good for Google. Now, uh, the key thing about this is, and we're going to discuss, uh, this has to do with templating a little bit. So sometimes, uh, you know, um, this is uh, not going to display on your theme. It, it really depends on what your theme is. So if I go over here and I'm not there anymore <laughs> because I completely, and you see over here, nothing appears. But if I click on it, now I have this over here. This is an entry as to when Mark was happy when, I'm sorry, I wrote that. What, what, what did I write? Where am I then? Uh, where am I? Let me see. Oh, you write. I mean, you write. Sorry. Uh, okay. So my blog, you write. Oh, here I am. So uh, you write, describe what this blog post is about. This is good for you and this is good for you, Google. So if I take this out, Uh, sorry, sorry. Let me get, let's get rid of all that stuff. I mean, hmm. uh, excerpt. So if I take this out and save it, this is not going to display anymore. And again, uh, what I want to emphasize this is that you may or may not have control as to where the excerpt appears. Uh, 
you know, but just make sure you write, you do fill it out because it, it it's it's good. It's it's good piece of information that that you know it's going to add more relevance to your content. Again, uh, the excerpt uh, depends on how your theme is as is built, and sometimes it will appear here. Sometimes it's going to appear here as a as a small introduction and. Uh, you know, I just wanted to throw it out there in case uh, you want to use it in order to, you know, enhance your, your your stuff even further. As you can see, I have a lot of revisions over here, and that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, this, these are the revisions. So here you can see how much I have uh, changed this. Uh, this is a bunch of garble, but to answer someone's question about Gutenberg versus Classic, if you can see, this is how this is how it gets stored in a database. Uh, this blog post. It, has this stuff here that's been criticized a lot by having these tags, which are really not the best way to store information. I would say perhaps it's a little less bloat to put the classic editor as opposed to Gutenberg one, but uh, it's just text. It's not gonna kill you uh, for having a lot of it. Okay, so that's except it was really, really quick. Uh, a word on permalinks, which is something I forgot uh, to do. Well, I didn't forget, you know, uh, I didn't forget, but basically permalinks is something that you need to define when you're starting your, your content. As you as you guys uh, saw with custom post types, you can define that when you're creating that. But with the block with the block, uh, you need to define that. So if you go to settings and you go to permalinks over here, uh, by default, I think WordPress does this. It does this. It has the day and name uh, configured. Okay. So what does this mean? It basically means uh, how is WordPress going to read this URL and translate it and fetch you the information that you need. Uh, WordPress behind the scenes works, works like this. WordPress works like this. Uh, it's your URL and then uh, question mark P equals and a number. So what does that mean? Basically it means that WordPress interprets this as give me the page with ID one, two, three. And WordPress does all the information behind the scenes in order to get you the content for that particular ID. So, but that's not really uh, friendly for uh, both search engines and users. So WordPress offers this, uh, it's called the permalink structure. And this allows you to change that and set that the way you uh, feel it's best. Now there's a bunch of options here. And which one do I like? I like to use uh, a custom structure. I use a custom structure and I get rid of this over here. This, by the way, works for blogs, for your blog posts. So I usually, uh, no, not usually, I always use category and then I use the post name, okay? Because this allows me to include the category within the URL of my blog post, okay? So this is very helpful because if we go back to posts over here and, uh, yeah, I go to all posts. If I view this, and uh, let's go to you write. If I let me paste that over here. If you view this, it's the structure is mysite.com backslash news, which is the category. And you write is my uh, slug for that particular post type. So again, I am enhancing uh, the URL with certain keywords that might be suitable for my business. In this case, news isn't because uh, this is not something I need. But uh, let's say, for example, that you uh, have, I'm a web developer and I had web design, web design as one of my categories. So this is definitely better you know, because I'm associating my website with this keyword called web design, or I could even go further and say web design Costa Rica. And, uh, you know, that makes it even richer. And now I'm, you know, think of the pyramid thing. I'm adding a little bit more content to my, uh, I'm adding a little bit more meat to that bone, to that pyramid in order to, uh, you know, have relevant keywords as to what I do that are going to be visible to both search engines and my visitors. So I wanted to throw it out there in case you want to review that and set a structure before you decide to take off. Okay. Uh, menus, uh, we need to define them. So menus is something that I'm going to discuss really briefly because they really depend on how your theme is configured, uh, how your theme is made, how it's built. So in order to see the menus, you go to appearance, 
and you go to menus over here and you're gonna have a bunch of options on which you can either create your own menus. Uh, for this, uh, uh, yes, you create your own menu over here and uh, I'm gonna delete all of this stuff. I'm gonna start from scratch. So, uh, what this does is uh, you have all these options here to your left and you can pretty much decide what to include, uh, you know, on your menu. So, we have fundraisers, we have custom links, categories, and boroughs. And let's say I want to include in my menu, first of all, I want to include my homepage. So, I would do perhaps uh, this over here. I would copy and paste this and I would do like this and put home like that. I want to include uh, all the fundraisers. So for that, uh, how do I do that? So for that, I go over here and do like that and fundraisers. And I will do like this, fundraisers. And last but not least, I want to do the boroughs. So I want to include all the boroughs. So I have to go back to my fundraisers, view at the boroughs. And yeah, I want to do it like this. Sorry, I have to copy and paste. So I do borough fundraisers. Uh, for fundraiser boroughs. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And now uh, let's include some pages here. I can view them all and I want to put the news, which is my post page. That's really it. You know, I'm like, okay, I want to save that menu. And now depending on your theme, you can manage the locations of it. You can create a different menu for your horizontal, like when you are designing uh, WordPress themes, uh, you define the locations of it. So in this case, the, the, the theme that I'm using, the uh, 20, I think it's 2020, yeah, 2020, I can have all these four menus and I can pretty much define what I want, which menu do I want to include with it, okay? So in this case, uh, I only have my menu created, but you can create your own menus and you can assign them to each of these uh, locations that you have within your theme. So again, you have to check your theme documentation for it in order to know what the locations are and uh, you just work your way through that. So once I do that and I save that, so my menu is now going to look completely different and it's going to have all of this. Okay. Whoa, I did a mistake there. Okay. It's a URL mistake that I did, but uh, you have the fundraisers over here and oh, what did I do wrong? Ah, it's because I added the New York stuff. Sorry. I have to add the New York thing to my URL. I forgot. So, uh, you know, that's more or less uh, how menus work. Again, check uh, how your theme is configured in order to uh, customize the menu the way you uh, deem fit. Uh, the last thing I wanted to, uh, no, one of the last things I wanted to touch uh, was the forms. Uh, so, you know, forms are very closely tied to your goals. Uh, forms capture information about your leads, about your visitors, and you may want to do stuff with it. So I'm going to go really quick because I just noticed we are uh, we extended time a little bit. So uh, in order to do that, yeah, you can go to your plugins and you can pretty much add a new plugin and you just type in the word form. If you type in the word form, uh, a bunch of plugins are going to come up. Uh, Contact form seven is the one I'm using. Uh, for this particular webinar. But again, you can go into all the forms that you need. Again, uh, make sure that you view how many installations, when was it updated, is it compatible, what the current reviews are. And I have this already active, so it's gonna appear over here under the contact thing. And this is gonna have all the contact uh, forms that I have available. So this is really uh, simple uh, in the way that Pretty much you have to do it like this. You have to copy the short code and you have to go to the page or post or whatever you want to paste that at. Excuse me. And you just do that. So you open that over here and you just put the post like that. You put the short code like this, you save it. And what this does is let's open this in a new window is that this is going to have the fields that I already defined 
within my uh, block form, uh, but between my form, which in this case, it's this over here. Yeah, it's this one, eh? yeah. So again, I'm not gonna walk over a lot of it, but basically you have to, you have all these fields, you kind of click on them and it's gonna insert that, and it's gonna insert that into the form. And in the end, you just need to copy and paste that uh, short code and it's gonna do that for you. So in here, you're gonna, you can configure the email, like uh, what the body needs to be, what the subject will be, who, the from, etc. And in here, you have all the fallback messages that you wanna use in case somebody doesn't submit the form correctly, when it's been submitted, if it's an error. So you just read this and, and you configure it the way you want it to, have, to behave. Um, this, I won't go into details because that's a little uh, over the top, but uh, that's more or less how, how it works. So uh, once you do that, you can, you can insert your form via shortcode. Uh, this is something I discovered recently because when I started to use uh, Gutenberg, a lot of people complained about the fact that their shortcodes went kaput, and that was true. So in future revisions, uh, they added the uh, possibility for you to add a shortcode. So you can definitely do that. So uh, if you go down over here and you click the little plus sign and you minimize this and you go into widgets, you should have the short code available here. So you just paste that short code exactly as you would do with the editor, classic one. So, you know, I think that was a cool feature that they did. You know, a lot of people rely on short codes. A lot of plugins rely on short codes and plugins are basically what keeps WordPress alive being that the huge ecosystem that it is. So I did that. And if I go to view post again, I'm gonna have my same form available to me. So this was a really cool thing that I, I hadn't noticed really because uh, I don't use shortcuts a lot, but uh, you know, uh, WordPress did that for you and now you can add you know, your own custom shortcuts using uh, the Gutenberg uh, editor. So I think that's kind of cool, you know? And uh, I think that's it for forms. Uh, the last thing I wanted to set was the SEO and analytics. Okay, uh, this is a little bit out of the scope of this uh, webinar. We're gonna include this for future webinars. Uh, we're gonna, the next one is going to be about SEO soon. So uh, basically, uh, if you want to set your uh, analytics in order to track uh, what your customers are doing, I uh, use this plugin called All-in-One SEO. And in there, you basically put your uh, Google Analytics key uh, over here, your analytics ID over here. And you do that in this way, you can uh, track what your visitors are doing through the analytics dashboard. And you could also, uh, you know, set your titles and descriptions for all your post uh, types, either custom or, uh, or not. And you have co complete control over that. And this plugin does all that stuff for you because, uh, you know, by default uh, themes don't, aren't, aren't really that descriptive as far as uh, custom content is concerned. Okay, and the last example, I'm sorry uh, we took uh, so long. I'm gonna think I'm gonna uh, maybe, no, I'm not sure if I should do it. I said I was gonna use the fake scenario of uh, using my website, like I'm a developer, but uh, I think I'm gonna leave it as that because I'm a little bit out of time and, and questions will come. And I also think I explained the, uh, the museum thing really, really easy. So uh, I think I'm gonna skip that today, I'm sorry, unless people ask for it, you know, when they sing. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you. And uh, yeah, well, let's now look I'm at ready the, for the questions. Let's look at the Q&A if there's something. To be oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, how can I find whether my organization website is missing alt text in other words, how can we access alt text? Ooh, that is a good question. That is a very good question. Uh, I'm sure, I, you know what, I'm gonna, uh, okay, Cliff did that, but I don't know if there is a, yeah, I think so. I think there are accessibility tools that allow you to review uh, your, scan your website and, and see if there's alt text missing on some of the images. So you, I, I'm, I'm almost positive there are tools for that. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, it's easier, faster to run SEO tool. Okay, the problem with uh, Screaming Frog is that uh, the, the free version is gonna scan your uh, 500 uh, results. So if your website is big, 
it's gonna it might not include everything but uh but yeah i i would definitely use a tool for that i i just don't have the name for it i'm sorry and wonderful webinar and cliff answered caroline marinella michela okay she answered that as well wonderful webinar thank you okay answer yes okay okay cool okay and anything at the chat let me open that okay. i don't see anything erica do you there's a lot of comments. No. Thank you. Yes, Everybody is, uh, is engaging. Everybody's helping and giving suggestions. That's really nice to see. That's all we want. But I don't see any other question. Do you? I, I think we okay. have uh, oh. one question in the QA section by oh. Marianela. It's the last one. Oh. oh, it just came up. Okay, Marco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do I decide uh, yeah. plugin bloat? Which to keep, which to delete? Okay, uh, usually my uh, workflow would be if I don't need a plugin, I'll immediately delete it. I'll give you two reasons for that. Uh, first, uh, if you leave it on, uh, you could be exposing yourself a security risk later on the road where you kind of forget that you had that, oh, I had that plugin and I forgot. So, uh, and then it's a vulnerability comes up and you get hacked or something. So it's always best to deactivate them and delete them if you're not going to use them. Uh, my second recommendation would be, yeah, to keep it at a minimum. I would say for a WordPress site, I would try not to go over 15 plugins. You know, that's like my uh, threshold. I would, anything over 15, I would uh, seriously start considering using other uh, alternatives in order to, to, you know, keep my site as fast as possible. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions? Anybody who's here? <laughs> I don't see, I don't see. Okay. Um, it looks like nobody oh. has questions. Okay. But by the way, this is our uh, Twitter handle uh, at gogreengeeks.com. Uh, we are definitely going to have more webinars. Uh, there's definitely more webinars in the pipeline for all levels, uh, for web developers, designers, entrepreneurs, people who are starting with WordPress. We are definitely uh, going to go full swing with this. Uh, we absolutely love that. It's, re it's really stressful, but it's worth it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to say thank you for, you know, attending this one. Oh, there's and, a quick uh, note. There's a quick note of the Q&A from Cliff. Can you take a look at it and then... Um, How about having a window on a static page that includes events? For example. Oh, that is a very good one. That is a, that, that is a good question. Uh, how about having a window on a static page that includes events? So if I go back to my museum example, you're absolutely right, man. That, I thought nobody was going to catch that. <laughs> but yeah, you are correct because uh, actually I was thinking more of the support us because the volunteering, I said it was going to behave like a static page and the fundraising was going to behave like a uh, blog post, correct? So how, how would I do that? Uh, there's three approaches. The first one, I would try to find a plugin that would allow me to create uh, loops of custom post types as a shortcode. That would be my first uh, go-to uh, tool if I am not a web developer. If I'm not a web developer, that's what I would do. I would find a plugin uh, that would allow me to insert shortcodes into any page and I can loop over custom post types the way I would want to, okay? That would be my first uh, go-to solution. The second would be, and but I, I don't wanna draw the big guns out. <laughs> the second would be, uh, I would code it either into the theme or I would create my own very own short code uh, to do that. So, you know what? You should let me know if such plugin exists and if it doesn't, you know, I'll seriously consider creating one because I think that's a really cool idea of uh, creating a plugin with options that allow you to insert that and you, you can just loop over any custom post type that you see fit. And I would definitely be interested in creating something like that because I think it's really useful. Thank you. Thank you, Cliff. 
Uh, thank you, Marco. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'll give you my uh, email address. Hold on, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, that's my email. So if you don't find it, let me know. You know, I'll look, take a look because uh, you never know. <laughs> I think it's useful. I think it's useful. I, I thought about it when I was, uh, you know, so speaking about this. I was like, okay, sometimes, yeah, I may need to put a loop there and without touching the theme itself. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you all. There's no additional questions. I think we went over <laughs> a little bit on the time. I'm sorry. There was a lot of engagement, a lot of questions, a lot of communication. But we, we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar, which will be SEO, right, Marco? Yes, uh, I'm doing some homework. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the time, we will also be emailing you and we'll we'll have one about security as well which is very yeah. useful security we will be emailing you a link to this recording <laughs> and then thank you i think uh we'll see you next uh, time i'm gonna put cliff i'm gonna put it again okay uh m Barocca, uh, <laughs> we miss marco we miss. yes thank you yeah thank you thank you where's the quick Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Have a okay. great day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.